Ask yourself this, what happened to the RMS Carpathia after the night of, the, of April 14th, 1912? Well, in today's episode of Shipwrecked, I'm going to be explaining what happened to the Carpathia, what led, what, what happened that, what happened that night, and what her ultimate fate was. Enjoy. <laughs> I'm a Super Steve, and welcome to Shipwrecked. It's finally here, as I promised, and and today we're going to be going we're going going to be going over the Carpathia. Carpathia was launched in 1902 on August 6th, and her career was basically normal up until that point, up until 112, I believe, either 114 years ago or 112 years ago. On this day. 112 years ago, Carpathia received a, a signal from the maiden voyage from the recently launched and brand new RMS Titanic. And we all know what happened to Titanic. She struck her iceberg and went down in two hours and 40 minutes. But I'll be going more into, de more into detail about that on our Titanic episode. Harold Cottam, the Carpathia's wi wireless, wireless operator, rece received a distress signal from the Titanic. And what you guys don't know is that I think it was... It was Harold Bride or the other guy. I don't remember his name right now. Um, I'll put it. I'll put it on the screen when I find out. When I find out who it is. It. Oh, I remember now. Jack Phillips. Jack Phillips and Harold Bride were at the station that night on board Titanic. Harold Cottam was on, was preparing to pack up and get and go to bed because it was late. When he decided to give one more listen, and he heard the commotion about Titanic, that Titanic was sinking, and she and yeah. So she ran to her, so she ran, he, not she, he ran to the, to the bridge to confront, to tell the crew who, who was, a, who was on the bridge that night. Did they listen to him? <laughs> you'd be, you'd be right, you'd be, you'd be okay for thinking so, but no. They laughed at him because, remember, there was this whole thing that type, that people thought Titanic was unsinkable. And back then, pranks were still a thing. Also, look at my shirt. Just not a plug. I thought it was ironic, and I thought it was cool to do this. That aside, so after the crew wouldn't listen to him, Harold Cottam did did what did the unthinkable. He ran to get the captain. Sorry, guys, camera cut off. So, let's continue. Harold Cottam ran to the, ran to the captain's quarters and woke him up without even knocking. Isn't that crazy? If I can find a certain clip from from Historic Travels, link below, I'll play it. And I'm sure it's not going to be that hard. When Harold broke in, it immediately woke up Arthur, and as you can imagine, he was pretty annoyed with his wireless operator for breaking into his cabin. He literally said to Harold, what are you doing? Why did you break in here? Haven't you ever heard of knocking? But basically, he ran in and woke the captain up, and, it, and it'll say this in the, in the clip if I can find it, but he's like, haven't you heard of knocking? And, he sh and Harold caught him, showed him the, the signal, the, the message from Titanic, and, he's, and he asked him if he was certain. He, he said yes, and... He gave the order to get Carpathia going and get it headed towards Titanic. And if I remember correctly, uh, the captain told Harold Cottam to to uh, to give to tell Titanic that they're coming, that they're on their way. They did, and uh, Jack Phillips or Harold Bride—I don't remember. I'm pretty sure it was Harold Bride. Thanked him and continued on, and continued sending more ships. Not a, need, need I remind you though, Carpathia was. 50 miles away. So it took a while. Four hours to be exact. But once once Carpathia arrived, 700 passengers were picked up and brought to New York. But that's not the end of Carpathia's story. I don't know the rest of Carpathia's story, and I'll do a revamped Carpathia episode when I know more. But I'm going off of what I, what I know. So here's our second question. The Carpathia made it to World War I, but unfortunately she wouldn't survive the whole war. In 1916, 
uh, I'll put up what U-Boat it was. I don't remember what it was called, which, what it was. But it was U-Boat, it was U-something. Torpedoed Carpathia three times. Once in the bow, once in the, in the middle of the ship to knock out her power, and a third time, which fully sealed the fate of the RMS Carpathia. And I'll put up a picture of the wreck here. But I'm sorry, uh, this is the first episode of Shipwreck, so I'm so sorry it's so short. I'm so sorry this segment is so short, but yeah. Again, I don't know much about Carpathia's story, so you gotta be work with what I've got. Anyways, guys, hope you guys enjoyed the first episode of Shipwrecked, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks again for... And go subscribe to Historic Travels and Ocean Liner Designs. They are where I get all my info for Shipwrecked. Thanks again, guys. One more thing. The Carpathia was sunk on July 17th, 1916. There you go. Just in case you were wondering that. You probably were. Bye, guys.